Hello, my name is Mary Beth. I am one of the paediatric registrars in the Royal Jubilee Maternity Hospital in Belfast. Today we are going to demonstrate how to administer surfactant via LMA, which is a relatively new skill being introduced in our unit. So firstly, a bit about the rationale of surfactant administration. Early surfactant administration has been shown to reduce the need for mechanical ventilation and its complications, including the risk of BPD. Early surfactant can be given by Insur, Lisa or LMA. To appreciate the significance of LMA-based surfactant, it's important to understand why it has advantages over the other methods of administration. LMA has the advantage of avoiding pre-medication and laryngoscopy whilst maintaining PEEP throughout the procedure for the baby. In the Royal Jubilee Maternity Hospital where I work, LMA surfactant may be considered in infants who need it who meet the following criteria. They must be greater than or equal to 28 weeks gestation and they must be greater than or equal to 1200 grams in weight. Please note that it has been approved locally for use in this weight range and the LMA is marketed between 2 and 5 kilos. Okay, just to go through some contraindications where LMA surfactant may not be the most appropriate method of administration for your baby. If your baby is in imminent need for intubation, if they have maxillofacial, tracheal or known pulmonary malformations, if they have major congenital abnormalities, including confirmed or suspected cardiac disease, or if there is an alternative cause for the respiratory distress, for example, a congenital pneumonia. Okay, so just to review the setup, there's some things we need. We need medications, including surfactant. We need atropine at 20 mics per kilo. And we need sucrose as pain relief for baby. Equipment we need. We need our surfactant giving set, a Neopuff device. We need the T-piece circuit with the duckbill port and that's important so that we can pass the surfactant catheter through. We need an eye gel size one, some lubricant. We also need a capnograph to detect CO2 and ensure correct placement of our LMA. We need suction. We need an OG or an NG tube and we need two of those. And we need a face mask. Finally, just to reiterate some of the unique equipment used in LMA surfactant administration, we have a size 1 eye gel, which is marketed for infants of between 2 and 5 kilos, but has been approved locally for use in our hospital for babies greater than or equal to 1200 grams. We also have a TP circuit with a duck bill port and this allows insertion of surfactant set. And you can see a good demonstration of that in the picture on the bottom right of this slide, where you can see the surfactant set going through the duckbill port. So now we are going to gather our equipment for our administration of surfactant by LMA. So we need a number of things. First of all, we need a sterile drape to place on the surface so we can lay out our equipment. We need a tea piece that has a duckbill port and we have labelled ours with surfactant for ease of um, grabbing them. We need a laryngoscope or a tongue depressor for moving the tongue out of the way to guide ease of insertion. We have a size one eye gel, which is appropriate for um, babies with weights of 2 to 5 kilos, although in our unit this has been approved locally for use in over 1200 grams. We need some um, lubrication jelly for um, the back and sides of the eye gel. We have an NG tube um, and ideally you need two of these so if the baby doesn't have one in they need one put in before and a second one for putting in after the procedure and an enteral syringe additionally. We also have a capnograph to check for colour change. We have our surfactant administration set. 
our surfactant itself. Some sucrose as analgesia and some atropine which we give to all babies to prevent bradycardia. Okay, so we've got all of our equipment set out now. There's a couple of things we want to do before we go to the baby. So one of the first things to do is to use your um, tea piece with the duckbill port. You want to take off the blue part and then you want to check that you can pass a catheter through the duckbill port and see it come out the other side. So I'll just show that now. So you want to put the catheter through and make sure that you see it be able to come out the other side and that passes easily. That can be a bit difficult, so it is important to do before you get to the baby and have started the procedure. The other thing that you want to do before you go to the baby is to get your surfactant drawn up. So here we have some surfactant and our surfactant administration set. So we're going to connect this part in, so you peel off the silver part on the top and then you push this through, open the connector, attach the syringe and then you can draw up your surfactant at whatever dose is required. And then this attaches to the surfactant administration set and I always leave a bit of air at the top so the catheter is completely clear after administration. So now we're ready to go to the baby. Okay, so now we're with the baby. The first thing we have to do is connect our um, T-piece with duckbill port to the nail puff. So you put that where you'd normally put the nail puff in the gas outlet. And then you can check your pressures. So we deliver the same peep that the baby has been on um, before administration. And then if we need to, we can deliver breaths through the circuit, so check what the PIP is. And those settings are appropriate for this baby. Okay, so now we're with the baby, we're going to aspirate their OG tube and then remove that because we have a second one to insert after the procedure. We're going to lubricate the back of the eye gel um, and the sides, so a bit of lubricant on both the posterior aspect and the sides, but definitely not over the opening from which we're going to administer the surfactant. We keep the baby on their CPAP at the same pressure they've been getting and we've set the Neopuff to deliver the same PEEP. We can stop that but not remove the mask after the eye gel has been inserted. So we're going to give some atropine now through a line we've checked as patent and then followed by a flush to make sure the baby's heart rate is maintained over 100 throughout the procedure. That's your atropine now. Perfect. So now I'm going to use the laryngoscope just to move the tongue out of the way to aid insertion. A tongue depressor could also be used for this and we're going to insert the LMA or the eye gel following the roof of the mouth. Attach a CO2 detector looking for colour change in our spontaneously breathing baby to assess position. We've confirmed our position, we've gotten CO2 detection on our um, detector. We're going to remove that now and reconnect the T piece and it's time for delivering the surfactant. So one person always holds the eye gel and a second person will put the surfactant catheter through the duckbill port to a depth of 14 to 16 centimetres. And then we will deliver the surfactant um, slowly as the baby is a, um, inspiring, watching the monitor to ensure um, their stability. So three or four minutes later, we've administered all of our surfactant. We remove the catheter and um, our baby is still breathing. We make sure we turn back on the CPAP machine.
before we remove the LMA. So we'll have that done now. And then we can remove the eye gel. We then want to reinsert an orogastric gastric tube and aspirate the stomach to check for how much surfactant there is there to ensure the success of the procedure. So that's our procedure completed. There's a few more things you want to do um, following this. You want to document in the baby's notes. You want to monitor their FiO2 and their work of breathing. You want to check how much surfactant has been aspirated from the stomach and we're aiming for less than 50% for this to be considered successful, which is hopefully the case. Thank you for watching our video. We hope you found it useful and look out for more videos on our Neosim channel. Thank you.